Anybody who watches this show on a regular basis knows the fact that uh, I think Mayor Pete is a little careerist weasel ladder, ladder climber, um, and he's one of the most soulless members of the Democratic Party. He's a vapid narcissist. I can't say enough negative things about him. Now, having said that, um, there are some people in the world who are worse than Mayor Pete in different ways. Um, for example, every single host on any of the financial news channels, like CNBC, so Mayor Pete goes on CNBC to talk about some of Biden's plans, including his, uh, his infrastructure plan, and this host thinks he's got Mayor Pete in a gotcha moment, but watch what happens. Gotcha. Mm. You ever hear the expression, all, all politics are local, Mr. Secretary? So you're the transportation secretary now. So we're proposing a, a usage for the term infrastructure that Republicans would say includes every wish list from the Democratic Party going back 50 years. As a transportation secretary, don't, do you now, and be honest with me, do you now just wish that we'd look directly at what your domain is? Roads, bridges, airports, throw in, you know, some uh, internet and, and Wi-Fi. Let's do seven, eight hundred billion, do it with Republicans, get it done, give me my infrastructure, transportation, and, and, and do not try to do everything at once. Tell me that you believe that, but I know you won't. <laughs> I mean, look, as, as the org chart goes, I'm, I'm the roads and bridges guy, right? The transportation part is the piece that I work on. But when I think about why roads and bridges matter, the, the, the fundamental reason they matter is they make it possible for Americans to live lives of their choosing, right? Whether there's a good road to get you where you're going is going to help determine whether you can go to school, whether you can go to work, whether you can see your family. And I think the same thing is also true of the other forms, the broader forms of infrastructure we're talking about. They're all part of the foundation that make it possible for us to live well. Now, I don't want to get bogged down in a semantic or philosophical argument uh, over but, what to call something if it's a good policy. Right? Oh, I mean, the, uh, you're Mr. describing Secret these as democratic items, but these are things the American people want. No, Mr. These, these Secretary, really, I just, I, you, might, you might as well just tell me, you know, you need those roads to drive to free college and free child care, and therefore I want to build them so that, I mean, come on. Come on. Well, no, you know, I mean, I think all this fits together because, look, you, you, can, you can either organize your thinking around the org chart of the federal government, or you can organize it around what the lives you, of human beings in this can, country are actually Then you can like. make that jump to everything under the sun is infrastructure, and we should spend $100 trillion and give everything to everyone because that's what their life is. You, you, you can't do We don't have the money. We don't have the wherewithal. We, we do don't have, have the money, the though. That's, that's the thing. Like, we, well, we abundantly do have the money. He's right. I mean, we absolutely do have the money. In fact, Biden made a point of trying to make these revenue neutral. So, in other words, you offset all of the spending with tax increases. Now, the tax increases happen to be something that these CNBC goons also complain about, but it makes no sense to complain about that because if you care about it being revenue neutral, okay, well, Biden looked out for that. Raising the corporate tax rate, raising taxes on everybody who makes over $400,000 a year, that's how you pay for it. Raising the capital gains rate, that's how you pay for it. So they want to have their cake and eat it too and criticize the plans but then also criticize the tax increases. You can't criticize the spending, but then turn around and criticize the pay for for the spending. That makes no sense. But it's CNBC, and they don't have to make sense. So, yeah, and furthermore, when they say, well, we don't have the money, what does that mean? What does that mean? We, uh, even if we did deficit spend, we still have the money. You have the money if you deficit spend. You have the money if you offset it with revenue increases through tax increases. You, we have the money. It's just this lazy thing that they fall back on when they don't agree with the policy. And so CNBC idiots don't agree with free childcare and free college. And they're just like, nah, we don't have the money. Have they ever said we don't have the money when it comes to Wall Street bailouts? No. In fact, they supported the Wall Street bailouts. They've never said we don't have the money when it comes to endless wars or giving Israel nearly $4 billion every single year for them to murder Palestinian babies. Never said it. They never said it because they agree with those policies. So this is a rare instance where... Um, where Mayor Pete is correct. Uh, and I like how Joe's argument is effectively, come on, 
Joe Kiernan, the CNBC host, when Mayor Pete makes his point, he's like, but <laughs> you might as well say we need roads and bridges to get to the free child care in college. I mean, come on. Come on is not a point. Come on is not an argument. Come on is what you say when pe you're sitting around people who already agree with you and you don't have to make an argument. Well, guess what? We don't agree with you. In fact, we think you're kind of dumb. So, um, now let's get to the, the bigger issue here is this. Why did Democrats include in the original proposal things that are arguably not infrastructure in the infrastructure bill? The answer is very simple. You only get like two or three cracks at reconciliation, which is the process where 51 votes is all you need to pass legislation in the Senate. Regular order, you need 60 or more votes, which is not happening. It's not possible. So since you only get two or three cracks at reconciliation, you have to get through all of your stuff through reconciliation in only two or three cracks. That's why you have these bills that have so many things in it. Because I, I'd like to have a system where we vote one by one on all these things. That would be great. But we don't have that system because we have the filibuster, which makes it impossible to pass anything through regular order. So you, you're left with no choice but to jam a bunch of shit into the few packages that you're going to try to pass. And so that's why you have free college and, uh, you know, free childcare and things that are arguably not infrastructure in the infrastructure deal. That's why you have packaging together of a variety of issues all in one. Because they have no choice but to do that if they actually want to try to get their agenda passed. But of course, the idiots on CNBC, they spend, you know, days arguing... Well, free college and free childcare isn't really infrastructure, so how could you put that in the infrastructure bill? What does it even matter if, ultimately, the American people want these things? It doesn't really matter. Again, I would prefer a system where you vote issue by issue and you do it where all you need is 51 votes in order to win. I, I would prefer that. But we don't have that system. And so since we don't have that system, would I prefer Biden does nothing and gets nothing done, or would I prefer him bundle a bunch of shit together and try to get it all through reconciliation with the two or three shots at it? I prefer that! God, they're so stupid. When Mayor Pete can run circles around you on your network, to say you're bad at your job isn't nearly harsh enough.